know, we've been having a fun time celebrating this amazing country of ours. And so we should look at everything, including the plants. Carson Arthur is here. He has gone out. Coming out from the shrubs. I'm in the jungle. <laughs> oh, no, there's going to be memes about me pop popping out of the bushes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think it's awesome that you've been able to curate some plants from right across the country, coast to coast. Coast to coast. So, so you're going to start on that side, which is the West yeah, Coast. Yeah, let's start on the West Coast. What, yeah. Really what's been happening with me over the last four months is I've had the pleasure of actually being in every province speaking yes. and talking yes. to homeowners and talking about the problems that they're having in their outdoor spaces, but also getting a chance to see what's going on in the plant culture. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about some provincial flowers, but we're also going to talk about some of the bad things that people are doing. And we're going to talk about ways to incorporate some of the red and white that's happening across the province, maybe in your own space. Lovely. Okay. So let's okay. start with on the West Coast. Yep. The West Coast, we're seeing lots of microclimates. So mm -hmm. microclimates are areas of, you know, maybe more tropical weather, lots yes. of moisture. We see Victoria, we see all these stuff. People go out to visit because their plants are so spectacular out there. Yeah. I'm seeing more palm trees really? being incorporated into landscape designs. Yeah, we're actually seeing people like using palm trees in their front yards, not just in their container baskets. They're oh, planting really? them in the ground, which I think is cool if you can get that away with it. so crazy. But be realistic here. Mm -hmm. These are palm trees. They're not designed for our climate as much yeah. as they love our summers across the rest of the country. That is the one spot you can do it. So if you're in Victoria, lucky you, yeah. for the rest of us, we're not going to go down that route. Got okay, it. So let's avoid the palm trees a little bit. Okay. As we move west, Alberta. Alberta is all about the blue spruce. Mm -hmm. In every front yard, you're seeing these guys. And unfortunately, we're seeing these being taken down all over the place. Why is that? Because people saw them and they went, oh, these are so gorgeous. They're called Fat Boy Blue Spruce. What a great name. They're lovely. Let's put it up near the house. And what's uh -oh. happening is the exactly blue spruce have a habit of growing big and they love Alberta. They love Calgary and Edmonton and they love those climates. So yeah. these things are getting massive, 40 feet across at the bottom, 65 feet tall. So people are cutting them down, which is really unfortunate because the spruce are doing so well there. Yeah. But what's happening is kind of exciting. So when these people are removing their spruce, they're actually moving to meadow gardens. And we're seeing more meadow gardens in Alberta, but also in Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And we're starting to see people plant things that would have naturally been there or introducing some species mm -hmm. specifically designed for meadows. Things like this red yarrow, which I love the color. But what's also exciting, the bees love it too. Lovely. And this blooms all summer long with that beautiful, intense red, which I think is quite gorgeous. Yeah. And then they're pairing them with things like white daisies and yes. all kinds of uh, meadow rue and bee balm. Mm. And they're, they're actually paying more attention to the bee uh, the plight of the bees than anywhere else in the country, which I think is fantastic. That's so, happening in Alberta, the, like the, the prairies. prairies. Yeah. That's lovely. They're really on board and paying attention to that, which yeah. I love. I love the attention that's just happening with wildflower flowers now. Like, just go crazy and have some fun with them. Um, and I, I think that's great. Very interesting about the, the blue spruce, though. I mean, I say still plant them, but far away from the front door. Absolutely. Right? Or at because the back of the gorgeous. property. It is gorgeous. Or at the backyard. And, and unfortunately, these trees are getting a bad rap because everybody's cutting them down that's instead beautiful. of putting them in properly. I know. So you can do that in your house, just know that it's going to get big. Exactly. So let's talk about Ontario yes. and Quebec because okay. a couple of very interesting things are happening. First of all, big debate in Ontario as to what's the Canadian maple tree. All hmm. right. Now, I've got two here, Tracy. Mm -hmm. One of these is a red maple and one is not. I'd say this is the red maple. And that's where people go wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is actually a Norway maple. It's called the Crimson King. Mm -hmm. It's an import that we're getting from Europe. Unfortunately, they're very invasive in Canada, and they're oh. taking over. And everybody's thinking, well, I'll plant it because it's got such a beautiful dark leaf. Yeah. How gorgeous. It's obviously got to be our Canadian red maple. Yeah. This green one is the Canadian red maple. Why do we call it the and red maple? And everybody thought, well, it's fall color and stuff. Right. No, half the time they go yellow or orange. It okay. doesn't really matter. The red is actually in the stem. And I'm going to hold one here for you oh. so you can see it. There's a red line in the stem right there. Now, that actually is what identifies this as a red maple. I see. So, if you want to plant a maple tree in your property, go with the red or go with the sugar maple. Mm -hmm. Now, we know in Quebec, everybody loves their maple syrup and sugar pie, and I'm a huge fan of that, too. Yeah. So, planting more sugar maples to replace what we're losing during forestry or urbanization, yes. really important right now. Excellent. The other thing that I just saw in Montreal last weekend... So many people are going back to vintage flowers. Okay. Yeah, we're seeing geraniums popping up everywhere. Now, well, they're easy. And my grandma, <laughs> she loved her geraniums. <laughs> but I, an I started, easy flower. Yeah, I started laughing driving through hip, trendy neighborhoods and yeah. everything's geraniums and impatience. Okay. And I was like, well, okay, but they're showing their pride. It's all red and white and they're into yeah. it. Now, I love the geraniums because they're so easy to grow. They Anybody are. can grow these. 
which is probably why grandma Everybody did it. Does. Everybody does. The one thing that you need to about, remember about geraniums, and unfortunately there's not a good example here, but once the flowers are done, you yeah. need to remove the heads. So oh, you're gonna okay. pinch them off. And I just sacrificed that one just that was actually evil. good. I know, we're gonna tuck it behind somebody's ear later. Okay. Uh, so you've gotta remove them. By removing the heads and deadheading these, it'll promote more, more growth. Okay. These will bloom all summer long for you. Yeah. Also, what my grandma used to do, is she'd take a little section of the roots, throw it in a paper bag, and you're done. Okay. okay. Yeah, and you can save it all winter long. So now, all of my East Coast friends, I'm seeing a lot more attention on lupins. Lupins are such an easy flower to grow. Now, yeah. this is a red lupin, even though it looks slightly pink. It mm -hmm. actually has some red tones. It will get more intense during the summer. But the red and the white, such a beautiful flower. So important for the environment, for the bees out east. Okay. And I love it because it does so well on the East Coast. So, if it's you want to have a little fun on the East Coast, plant some lupins.